Welcome to the 1915 IHCBS Settings Rule Training. Thank you for viewing this presentation. My name is Dawn Pearson. I am the administrator of the 1915 I Medicaid State Plan Amendment for Home and Community Based Behavioral Health Services. I'm with the Medical Services Division of the North Dakota Department of Human Services. The 1915 I is a collaborative effort between the department's Medical Services Division and the Behavioral Health Division. The legislatures approved three FTEs for the 1915I, currently held by myself and Melissa Clocky with the Medical Services Division and a third position in the Behavioral Health Division. As 1915I providers, you will serve both traditional Medicaid and Medicaid expansion members. This is included in the provider agreement you signed when enrolling as a 1915I provider. The North Dakota Department of Human Services will provide training for the services you provide to traditional fee-for-service Medicaid members, and Sanford Health Plan is the managed care organization for expansion members and they will provide training applicable to Medicaid expansion members. Further information on 1915I for expansion members is available from the Managed Care Organization at the link provided on the slide. This presentation will, one, explain what the Home and Community-Based Services Settings Rule is and what it does. Two, define the four categories of settings. Three, provide instructions for care coordinators to verify compliance with the HC HCBS Settings Rule, including the A1915I HCBS Settings Rule Site Visit Checklist and compliance verification form, B, settings modifications, C, remediation process, D, heightened scrutiny process, and E, documentation requirements. The purpose of the HCBS settings rule is to ensure the 1915I HCBS benefit will be furnished to individuals who reside and receive HCBS in their home or in the community, not in an institution, and to ensure all participants receiving HCBS have personal choice and are integrated in and have full access to their communities, including opportunities to engage in community life, work, and attend school in integrated environments and control their own personal resources. Several key points to be aware of throughout this presentation. 1915I services cannot be provided to an individual until the setting has been determined HCBS settings rule compliant. Providers will not be reimbursed for 1915I services provided to an individual in a non-compliant HCBS setting. It is the care coordinator's role to verify compliance with the HCBS settings rule for all settings that each member will receive 1915I services in prior to the service being delivered. You may view the HCBS settings rule in the Code of Federal Regulations at 42 CFR 441.710A1-2. What is the HCBS settings rule? It is a federal regulation. Regulations are rules that tell people how to follow a law. The HCBS settings rule tells providers how to follow the Social Security Act, which is the federal law that created Medicaid. Medicaid funds HCBS services 
so the regulations must be followed. What does the HCBS settings rule do? The HCBS settings rule says what services meet the definition of home and community based services. It also says what services do not meet the definition of HCBS. It does this in two different ways. It gives members rights and two, it gives providers rules they must follow to guarantee those rights. The HCBS settings rule establishes requirements for the qualities of settings that are eligible for reimbursement for Medicaid home and community based services provided under sections 1915C, 1915I, and 1915K. The settings rule applies to the 1915I as well as all of North Dakota's HCBSC waivers, including the developmental disabilities, autism, and aging and disabled waivers. Here are some examples of members' rights given to them by the HCBS settings rule. The right to community living. That means the 1915I member has the right to live in the community, go into the community, get services in the community, and choose how to spend their time. 1915I providers can't decide when the member goes out into the community or stop them from doing so. The right to choose where to live. The rule says that members need to have choices about where to live. They have choices whether or not to have a roommate or to live in a group home. They can't be forced to choose only places to live that are just for people with disabilities. The right to choose where they get services, the right to choose who provides the services, the right to choose what kind of services they get, the right to have a person-centered plan of care. This is the plan that says what kind of services they will get. The person-centered plan has to be made at a meeting with the member in it, with them in charge. They have the right to a care coordinator to help them make the plan. The care coordinator cannot be the same person or agency who gives them other services except in a designated mental health provider shortage area. The right to respect and privacy. The service provider must give the member privacy and must respect them. The right to be free of restraint and seclusion. Restraint is when someone stops someone else from moving. Seclusion is when a member is isolated from others. Examples of rules providers have to follow under the HCBS settings rule. If a HCBS services provider owns the place where the member gets HCBS services, for example, a group home, this is called a provider owned setting. If a provider owned setting does not follow these rules, they cannot get paid for providing HCBS. The HCBS settings rule says that in provider owned settings, the member is like a tenant and gets all of the same rights as a tenant would, and the HCBS provider is like a landlord. The provider owned setting must be wheelchair accessible and the member must be able to lock the door to their room, be able to decorate any way they want, have access to food at any time, and have access to visitors of any kind at any time. Where can 1915I home and community-based services be delivered? In North Dakota, 1915I services will be provided to eligible individuals who receive home and community-based services in their own homes, in setting compliant provider owned and controlled residential settings, such as sober living homes, group homes, foster homes, treatment foster homes, and, trans and transitional living homes, in non-residential settings and in the community at large. 1915I services will not be delivered to individuals residing in institutions. 
a reminder of the key points of this presentation. Number one, 1959 services cannot be provided to an individual until the setting has been determined HCBS settings rule compliant. Number two, providers will not be reimbursed for 1959 services provided to an individual in a non-compliant HCBS setting. And number three, it is the care coordinator's role to verify compliance with the HCBS settings rule for all settings that each member will receive 1915I services in prior to the service being delivered. When does HCBS settings rule compliance verification begin? Verification of HCBS settings compliance may begin as early as during the member's initial meeting with the care coordinator. For example, if the member resides in a group home and will be receiving services in the group home, then the site visit to the group home can happen right away. Other settings verifications will need to wait until it has been determined which services the member will be receiving and where each of the settings are. Verification of compliance with the HCBS settings rule is conducted by the care coordinator through a process which includes site visits, completion of the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form, and the remediation and heightened scrutiny processes when applicable. This chart contains the HCBS settings categories. This chart identifies the four categories of settings. The setting type is defined and indicates whether or not a site visit and completion of the HCBS review checklist is required for the particular category. Note that site visits and checklists are not only required, or excuse me, Note that site visits and checklists are only required for categories two and four and not for categories one and three. Settings category number one consists of private residences. This is a community-based private residence that the participant lives in, including private homes and apartments, which are rented or owned by the participant or legal guardian or caretaker. A site visit is not required. The member will only need to provide proof of address, for example, a lease or a utility bill. The settings category number two includes settings where the individual is living with an unrelated caregiver in a provider owned or controlled residential setting such as sober living homes, group homes, foster homes, treatment foster homes, and transitional living homes. The settings in category two require both a site visit and completion of the checklist, as well as potential remediation. Category three settings are the institutions, nursing facilities, intermediate care facilities for individuals with intellectual disabilities, institutions of mental disease, PRTFs, and hospitals. Institutions are never compliant HCBS settings, so, so there isn't a need to complete a site visit or a checklist. Category four settings are those settings presumed to have the quality of an institution, including a setting that is located in a building that is also a publicly or privately operated facility that provides inpatient institutional treatment. Number two, a setting that is located in a building on the grounds of or immediately adjacent to a public institution. Number three, any other setting that has the effect of isolating individuals from the broader community. Category number four settings are presumed to have the characteristics of an institution and a checklist is always required 
as is potential remediation and heightened scrutiny. The following slides take a closer look at each of the four categories of settings by defining them, identifying the type of documentation required, and providing instructions for the care coordinator to verify compliance of the setting. These next slides will look at each of the settings categories and provide instructions on compliance verification and identify the required documentation. Settings category one are the private residences. The definition, any community-based private residence that the participant lives in, including private homes and apartments, which are rented or owned by the participant or legal guardian caretaker, which are located in typical community neighborhoods where people are living who do not receive home and community-based service. The documentation required for this setting, the individual or legal guardian is responsible for providing the care coordinator with a valid rental lease or a utility bill, for example, water, sewer, cable, or MDU. The bill is in the individual's or guardian's name as proof of home ownership or renting to verify compliance. Instructions, category one settings are presumed compliant. No site visit or HCBS settings checklist is required. The care coordinator saves a copy of the rental lease or utility bill and documents verification of compliance in the individual's plan of care. This slide contains guidance from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, or CMS. Question, what kind of compliance assessment with the home and community-based settings criteria does CMS expect of states for private residences? CMS answer, Individual privately owned homes, privately owned or rented homes and apartments in which the individual receiving Medicaid funded HCBS lives independently or with family member, friends or roommates are presumed to be in compliance with the regulatory criteria of a home and community based setting. States are not responsible for confirming this presumption for purposes of ensuring compliance with the regulation. North Dakota Department of Human Services policy regarding this is as follows. The individual or legal guardian is responsible for providing the care coordinator with a valid rental lease or utility bill, for example, a water, sewer, cable, or MDU bill in the individual's or guardian's name as proof of home ownership to verify compliance. Settings category two, provider owned or controlled residential settings. Definition, a setting where the individual is living with an unrelated caregiver in a provider owned or controlled residential setting, such as sober living homes, group homes, foster homes, treatment foster homes, or transitional living homes. The documentation required a completed HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form and documentation in the plan of care. Remediation may be necessary. Instructions. The care coordinator will conduct a site visit, complete the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form, document verification of compliance in the individual's plan of care. Any required modification and remediation efforts must be documented on the form and in the plan of care. Settings, category three, institutions. Definitions, again, institutions are nursing facilities, institutions for mental disease, intermediate care facility for individuals with intellectual disabilities, and a hospital. Documentation required. 
No assessment required as category three settings can never be compliant HCBS settings. The heightened, scrutin heightened scrutiny process, modifications or remediation are not options for category three settings as they can never be compliant. Since an individual residing in an institution can't receive 1915I services, there wouldn't be a plan of care, so no documentation is necessary. Instructions. The care coordinator would not conduct a site visit or complete the HCBS settings checklist for a category three setting. Settings category four. These settings are presumed to have qualities of an institution. Definition, the following settings will be presumed to be settings having the qualities of an institution unless CMS determines through heightened scrutiny based on information presented by the state or delegated parties that the setting does not have the qualities of an institution and that the setting does have the qualities of a home and community based setting. Again, those three definitions are a setting that is located in a building that is also a publicly, publicly or privately operated facility that provides inpatient institutional treatment. Number two, a setting that is located in a building on the grounds of or immediately adjacent to a public institution. Number three, any other setting that has the effect of isolating individuals from the broader community. The documentation required for determining settings compliance for category four, a completed HCBS settings rule site visit review checklist and settings compliance verification form and evidence report. Instructions, the care coordinator will conduct a site visit review inclusive of completion of the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form, including section C of the form. The care coordinator will search for evidence demonstrating the setting does not have the qualities of an institution and that it does have the qualities of a HCBS setting. The care coordinator will complete the evidence into a, will compile the evidence into a report and submit the completed HCBS settings rule checklist and report to the North Dakota Department of Human Services for their review, along with their recommendation whether or not enough evidence exists to warrant the settings submission for the CMS heightened scrutiny process. Here we are at the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form. This form is located on the 1915i website and this is the form used by the care coordinator to determine HCBS settings rule compliance. The next slides contain the instructions from the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form. On site visit instructions. This document contains the information to be gathered by the care coordinator during the on site visits to assist with determining compliance with the HCBS settings rule. The HCBS settings rule establishes requirements for the qualities of settings that are eligible for reimbursement for Medicaid home and community based services provided under sections 1915C, 1915I and 1915K. CMS defines home and community based settings by the nature and quality of individuals experiences. Two individuals from the same setting may have entirely different experiences. The on-site visit process is based on observations 
Discussions and Plan Review. This document is a tool and the information is organized to provide guidance in determining if characteristics are present. To assist in the determination, the reviewer will make other necessary inquiries and review provider policy and materials as needed. The reviewer must provide documentation to support or not support the findings based on the observations, discussions, both individual and provider, and plan review. The reviewer must note any other sources of verification utilized. For example, provider policy and procedures. Yes, no answers are not sufficient. All requirement areas on this form must be compliant for the setting to be determined a compliant HCBS setting. If one requirement area is not compliant, the setting does not meet the HCBS settings rule. Any areas with modifications required noted on the form must be discussed as part of the person-centered planning process and the HCBS settings modification section of the plan of care completed. Following completion of the checklist portion of the form, complete section A, B, or C. Sections A and B are applicable to only category two settings and section C is applicable to only category four settings. This slide contains the first section of the 1915-I HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form. The form contains the date of the care coordinator's on-site visit, the provider name, setting address, name of individual the setting is being reviewed on behalf of, name of the service to be provided in the setting, name of the care coordinator completing the site visit, and the type of setting being reviewed. Note this form asks for the name of individual or individuals in setting reviewed. Since completion of this form is based on the individual's personal experience in the setting, it's possible for two individuals to have entirely different experiences in the same setting. If this is the case, then a separate checklist must be completed for each. Because a setting's compliance is based on an individual's personal experience, it's entirely possible for a setting to be ver verified as compliant for one individual and not for a second individual. Again, the care coordinator will complete this form during the site visits for category two, provider owned and controlled residences, and for category four settings. Those settings presume to have the qualities of an institution. Settings categories one and three do not require site visits, nor do they require the completion of this form. If you are completing this form for a category two setting, you will record your findings in section A, HCBS site reviewer finder finding of compliant, or section B, HCBS site reviewer finding of remediation required. If you are completing this form for a category four setting, you will record your findings in section C, HCBS site reviewer finding heightened scrutiny required. Section one of the form is a description of the setting. The care coordinator is asked to describe the home, apartment, unit, apartment building, work, day support, location in the community. Is it among other private residences and retail businesses? What are the community interactions like outside of the setting? Is the setting only for people with disabilities? The care coordinator may attach pictures of the area, home, or Google Maps view. 
1915 I HCBS settings rule site visit review checklist and settings compliance verification form contains 33 requirement areas. Here's the first of the 33 requirements provided as an example. The requirement area is stated in the first column. The second column is completed by the care coordinator who documents evidence of compliance, any modifications required for the requirement to be compliant, and any comments. To assist in the determination, the reviewer will make other necessary inquiries and review provider policy and materials as needed. The reviewer must provide documentation to support or not support the findings based on the observations, discussions, both individual and provider, and plan review. The reviewer must note any other sources of verification utilized. The reviewer must note any other sources of verification utilized, for example, provider policy and procedures. Yes, no answers are not sufficient. The care coordinator will continue this process through all 33 of the requirement areas. Category number or category two settings. If you are completing this assessment for a category two setting, you will complete the HCBS site reviewer finding section A compliant or section B reme remediation required section. If all 33 of the requirements are found compliant with or without modifications, then the care coordinator will complete section A HCBS site review finding of compliant setting section of the form. If any of the 33 requirements are found non-compliant, then the remediation process is triggered. The remediation process requires the provider to enter their remediation plan and timeline into the third column, and the care coordinator will complete Section B, HCBS site reviewer finding of remediation required. Category 4 setting. If you are completing this assessment for a Category 4 setting, you will complete Section C, HCBS Site Reviewer Finding, Heightened Scrutiny Required, following your completion of the 33 requirement areas. Here is Section A, HCBS Site Review Finding of Compliant Setting section of the form. Section A is only applicable for Category 2 settings. If all 33 requirement areas are compliant, the care coordinator will complete Section A by attesting to the following. I have completed the required settings review and verify the above mentioned setting is compliant with the home and community based requirements at 42 CFR. If modifications to the HCBS settings rule were necessary due to the individual's needs, they are documented in this assessment and in the HCBS settings modification section of the person centered plan of care. Category two remediation required. Section B is only applicable to category two section settings. If the care coordinator finds one or more areas of noncompliance on the checklist, then the remediation process is triggered. There are up to four steps involved in the remediation process, depending on how successful the provider owner of the setting is with fixing the required areas of non-compliance. Step one of the remediation process, the care coordinator attests to the following. I have completed the required settings review and found the above mentioned address non-compliant with the home and community-based settings requirements at 42 CFR. This HCBS settings review checklist lists the required remediation efforts the provider or owner must make for the setting to be compliant. 
The provider owner has been provided the results of this assessment and been informed they have 21 days to make the required changes. The provider owner will contact me with the allowable 21 day rem remediation period to inform me they have completed the required changes. The care coordinator, who is also the site reviewer, signs and dates the form. After the provider has completed the required remediation effort, the care coordinator confirms and attests to the following. Step two, I verify the owner provider has completed the required remediation and the setting is now compliant. I am forwarding this completed HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and any accompanying remediation related documentation to the North Dakota Department of Human Services HCBS settings review committee at, I've provided my email address as well as Melissa Clockies. I verify any modifications to the HCBS settings rule listed in this assessment are required due to the individual's needs and are documented in the person-centered plan of care. The HCBS settings review committee will review the remediation finding and determine one of the following fully complies with home and community based settings requirements at 42 CFR or does not and cannot comply with home and community based settings requirements at 42 CFR or will fully comply with home and community based settings requirements at 42 CFR with the following additional changes and the provider has until such and such a date to remedy and provide the outcome to the North Dakota Department of Human Services HCBS Settings Review Committee. If this box is checked, the additional required changes will be noted and the department will identify the time frame the provider has to implement the required changes. This form will be returned to the care coordinator for them to notify the provider of the findings of the remediation deadline. This will be the final opportunity for the provider to make the required changes. The care coordinator will return this form to the North Dakota Department of Human Services HCBS Settings Review Committee by the established deadline and the representative will make a final determination of compliance. If determined compliant, the provider can proceed with providing the service. If determined non-compliant, the process has ended and 1915I services cannot be provided to the member in that setting. This form will be returned to the care coordinator for their records. Category four setting, heightened scrutiny. Section C, HCBS site reviewer finding of heightened scrutiny required. This section is only applicable for category four settings following the completion of the 33 requirement areas. Step one, check the appropriate box. Either I have completed the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and did not find sufficient evidence demonstrating the setting does not have the qualities of an institution nor did I find sufficient evidence that it does have the qualities of a HCBS setting. I am submitting the completed HCBS settings rule checklist and evidence report to the North Dakota Department of Human Services HCBS settings review committee and recommend this setting not be submitted to CMS for a heightened scrutiny review. Or I have completed the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and found evidence demonstrating the setting does have the quality of an institution and that it does have the qualities. OK, I need to back up here. That one word I forgot to say is very important, so I will start over. 
I have completed the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and found evidence demonstrating the setting does not have the qualities of an institution and that it does have the qualities of a HCBS setting. I am submitting the completed HCBS settings rule checklist and evidence report to the North Dakota Department of Human Services, HCBS settings review committee and recommend this setting be submitted to CMS for a heightened scrutiny review. Heightened scrutiny process. This is only applicable to category four settings. Step two. The North Dakota Department of Human Services HCBS Settings Review Committee reviews the documentation submitted by the care coordinator. The HCBS Settings Rule Committee has completed a re review of the HCBS Settings Rule site visit checklist and evidence and determined. Check one. Either evidence does not exist demonstrating the setting does not have the qualities of an institution, nor does evidence exist demonstrating the setting has the qualities of a HCBS setting. Thus, the setting is not HCBS compliant and does not qualify for the CMS heightened scrutiny process. Or evidence does exist demonstrating the setting does not have the qualities of an institution and does have the required qualities of a HCBS setting. Thus, the evidence will be submitted to CMS to initiate the heightened scrutiny process. Step three, CMS completed the heightened scrutiny process and either determined that setting does not comply with home and community based settings requirements at 42 CFR or determine the setting does comply with home and community based settings requirements at 42 CFR. Following the heightened scrutiny process for category four settings, following a CMS determination that the setting is HCBS compliant, the care coordinator will document in the individual's plan of care and 1915i services may be provided in the setting. In addition to this initial HCBS settings rule verification, written verification of settings must be continually assessed by the care coordinator and ongoing compliance documented in the plan of care throughout the individual's eligibility. Following a CMS determination, that the setting is not HCBS compliant, the care coordinator will document in the plan of care and ensure no 1915I services are provided in the setting. That brings us to the end of the form. For assistance completing this form, view the HCBS settings rule training and the HCBS settings assessment guide available at the 1915i website at the link provided. You may also contact Don Pearson or Melissa Clocky at this email address with any questions you may have. The 1915i person-centered plan of care template used by the care coordinator to complete the member's plan of care is located on the 1915i website. The form is a fillable PDF and includes areas to document verification of HCBS settings compliance and any required settings modifications. This slide contains the area of the plan of care where the care, coordinate, care coordinator will document the date of their verification of HCBS settings rule compliance for each of the services contained in the plan of care. If there were modifications to the settings rule required, the care coordinator will check the yes box and proceed to complete the settings modification section of the plan of care. Characteristics A through H that you see on this slide are from 
characteristic number seven of the settings assessment guide. And each of these areas must be documented in the plan of care whenever a modification to the settings rule has been made. A, if a modification has been made, the care coordinator will identify a specific and individualized assessed need that caused the modification. B, document the positive interventions and supports used prior to any modifications to the person-centered plan of care. C, document less intrusive methods of meeting the need that have been tried but did not work. D, include a clear description of the condition that is directly proportionate to the specified assessed need. Include regular collection and review of data to measure the ongoing effectiveness of the modification. F, include established time limits for periodic reviews to determine if the modification is still necessary or can be terminated. G, include the informed consent of the individual. And H, include an assurance that interventions and supports will cause no harm to the individual. Here's the settings modification section of the plan of care. Note that all requirements from characteristic number seven, A through H of the settings assessment guide that we just went through are included here. The HCBS settings modification section of the plan of care only needs to be completed if any modifications to the HCBS settings rule are required. Any modifications to a requirement must be supported by a specific assessed need and justified in the person-centered plan of care. Responses to each of the questions must be documented and the HCBS settings verification checklist must be kept in the member's individual file. So again, there are those same characteristics that we just went through. At each quarterly plan of care review, any settings modifications will be reviewed to determine if the individual has progressed and the restriction modification should be lifted. Ongoing HCBS settings compliance verification will be addressed by the care coordinator through the person-centered plan of care process. The person-centered plan of care process is utilized for each person and the care coordinator will continuously implement practices and procedures to meet HCBS requirements. The individual's experiences will be monitored by the care coordinator through face-to-face -face visits. Any identified issues will be remediated by using the person-centered plan of care process and or contacting an advocacy organization and or reporting to the North Dakota Department of Human Services. The care coordinator will request 1915I participants to contact them prior to a decision to relocate being made and inform them their continued 1915I eligibility and receipt of services may be impacted by a move. If during the course of the 1915I eligibility period, the participant is found to be residing in an institution, the care coordinator will notify all service providers and the zone of the change as 1915I services can't be provided to an individual residing in an institution. In the event, a 1915I member service provider or location of service changes, the care coordinator must verify the new setting is compliant with the HCBS settings rule. Verification of the HCBS settings compliance must be documented in the plan of care. Eligible member found to be residing in a non-compliant setting where they are also receiving 1915I services. Services will not be delivered in settings before HCBS settings rule compliance has been verified using the steps outlined in this training 
and the HCBS Settings Rule Site Visit Checklist and Compliance Verification Form. However, if for any reason a 1915I eligible individual is discovered to be residing in a setting suspected to be out of compliance where they are also receiving 1915I services, then the care coordinator will immediately initiate the appropriate settings verification process for that particular setting category. If remediation of the setting is a possibility, then the steps outlined in this training and in the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form will be carried out. Eligible members found to be residing in a non-compliant setting where they are also receiving 1915I services, continued from previous slide. If a decision is made that the setting cannot be remedied, a denial will be issued for that setting. The care coordinator will issue a 30-day advance written notice to the participant, informing them they are not able to receive 1915I services in that setting and must relocate to a compliant setting within 30 days if they wish to continue to receive 1915I services in their place of residence. The care coordinator will provide the individual assistance with finding other HCBS options in their community that fully comply with the rule. Participants will be provided choices among alternate settings that meet the participants needs, preferences and HCBS setting requirements. The care coordinator and person centered planning team will develop a transition plan to assist with relocation efforts. If it isn't possible to provide any 1915I services in a compliant setting, the client's 1915I eligibility will terminate. A question posed from CMS. Should Medicaid beneficiaries reside in residential settings that comply with the home and community-based settings criteria, even if Medicaid is only funding non-residential services for that individual? Answer, CMS is clarifying that states are responsible for ensuring compliance with the home and community-based settings criteria for those settings in which Medicaid beneficiaries receive HCBS. If Medicaid is only funding non-residential HCBS for an individual, then the state is not responsible for ensuring compliance with the settings criteria for the setting in which that individual resides. However, a state may decide to require beneficiaries receiving Medicaid funding non-residential HCBS to live in settings that meet the federal home and community-based settings criteria, even if the individual does not receive HCBS in the setting. So here is the North Dakota Department of Human Services policy regarding what we just read. Members cannot reside in an institution even if they are only receiving non-residential HCBS. The department only requires the settings the individual is receiving services to be verified HCBS compliant. Quality Assurance. The North Dakota Department of Human Services is responsible for assuring settings meet the home and community-based setting requirements in accordance with 42 CFR. The department's quality assurance process involves reviewing a select number of plan of cares annually. The department will check that all HCBS settings have been verified compliant on each of the plan of cares reviewed. The 1915I HCBS settings assessment guide is a resource to assist with completion of the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form. The HCBS settings assessment guide contains characteristics which are expected to be present in an HCBS setting. The guide provides suggested questions in determining the presence or absence of each requirement in a setting. 
not all questions may relate to every setting or every individual served. Residential questions can also be used additionally for the non-residential settings. This guide contains a quick reference and an expanded reference and is intended to be used as a resource to assist the care coordinator with completing the HCBS settings rule site visit checklist and compliance verification form. The guide is located on the 1915i website at the link provided. The following slides summarize the content of this guide. I won't read through the slides for the purposes of this training. However, you are encouraged to either read through the slides or review this guide in its entirety on the website. Here are the services available through the 1915i. Care coordination, training and supports for unpaid caregivers, respite, community transition service, non-medical transportation, housing supports, supported employment, supported education, benefits planning, peer support, family peer support, and pre-vocational training. There is a possibility each of these services may be provided in a different setting. For example, the care coordination service might be delivered in the member's home or in an office. The supported education service may be delivered in a school setting and the pre voc training in a different setting. Depending on where the services service is delivered will depend on what steps you will take to determine compliance with the HCBS settings rule. The home and community based settings rule is not applicable to the community transition service settings. The community transition transition service is the only 1915 I service that can be delivered while the individual is in an institution rather than a HCBS setting. The community transition service is initiated while the individual is living in an institution prior to officially being determined eligible for the 1915i. Thank you for attending today's presentation. Please make plans to view the training applicable to you on the 1915i website. A reminder to sign up on the website's mailing list to stay updated on future 1915i trainings. Thank you, this concludes the training.